Hi and welcome everyone. In this uh, video, I want to go over partial fraction decomposition, kind of review this because uh, partial fraction decomposition, you learn that in pre-calculus, however, is used in calculus to and differential equations. So let's do a fast review in this video and kind of refresh your memories. Now, what is the goal of a partial fraction decomposition? Then you have a fra fraction P over Q and both of them are uh, polynomials. What you want to do is decompose that. So to understand this better, let's go backwards and then see how this works with a simple example. For example, if you want to add these two fractions, two over X minus two plus three over X plus one, of course you find the LCD, so you multiply both uh, denominators and these are uh, prime factors. So to find the LCD, you multiply them and then you just uh, you multiply these two, two times X plus one plus three times X minus two. And then you can simplify the numerator. So you get two X plus two plus three X minus six by distributing the two and the three and you get five x minus four over x minus two times x plus one. Now if you want to let's say we are given this fraction and we want to decompose that. So the first thing if you want to decompose a fraction you have to take a look at the denominator. Here I put a note for you x minus two x plus one has non-repeated roots. So also x minus two and x plus one are linear expressions. So that's what you need to notice and I'll tell you why. So if, you, if we wanna decompose that, so you know you can write this as a over x minus two, a constant here. Remember if the denominator is a linear expression, then the numerator will be a constant. So one degree less. Plus x plus b over x plus one the same way. And then of course you write the LCD x minus two times x plus one, and then you multiply a by x plus one right here and b by x minus two, which I wrote it here. Same thing. You distribute here, you get AX plus A plus BX minus 2B by distributing the B here. And you can take all the terms with X, which is A and B. So you can put A plus B factor out X plus, and uh, the constants are A minus 2B. Now setting the numerator, since the numbers are the same, you can just imagine you can cancel them and you can set the numerators equal to each other here. So you can say five X minus four equals to A plus B X plus A minus two B. Then you can equate the coefficient. So the coefficient of X on the left side is five and on the right side is A plus B. So you can say five equals to A plus B and the constant term on the left side is negative four. And on the right side is a minus two b, so you can say negative four equals to a minus two b, and you get this system, and you can solve for a and b. How do we solve this for a and b? You can multiply the first one by two, and you get two a plus two b equals to ten. And if you add one, uh, you do if you add the one and two, then you can eliminate b. And you get three a equals to six. Solve for a. A will be two. Then you can go to number one here. The first one a plus b is five. So instead of a or to this one, it doesn't make right. Yeah, I took that one. So you can say two times two because a is two plus two b equals to ten. And solve for b, you get b equals to three. And as you, you notice, we got the uh, 5x minus 4 over x minus 2 plus times x plus 1 is 2 over x minus 2 plus 3 over x minus 1. So here I started by adding them. And uh, you get that. And if you decompose that 
you get that expression. So now there is another way of getting A and B, the alternative way. So let's go over that. So it's to just pick the way that you're more comfortable with. So 5x minus uh, 4 over x minus 2 times x plus 1, you can write that as a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 1. Same thing, LCD, and you multiply. So you get 5x minus 4 equals to ax plus a times x plus 1 plus b times x minus 2. Again, you can take the denominators out there, the same so you can cancel them. Now let's see how we can solve this. So we know that negative one is gonna make that expression zero. So if you let x equals to negative one and you substitute, you get five times negative one minus four and eight times negative one plus one plus b times negative one minus two. So here you get negative nine equals to negative three b. This is gone and b equals to three. If you pick now, you're looking for an x that's going to make that zero. So if x equals to two, if you substitute, you get five times two minus four on the left side equals to eight times two plus one plus b times two minus two. And that zero, you get three a equals to 10 minus four, solve for a and you get two. So that's another way of solving this if you don't want to write the system. Now, and this is the answer we got same answer so let's go over some examples of writing the composition we're not going to solve it at the end i'm going to do an example but here we're going to let's see how we can write it because not always q has a uh, linear uh, denominators or non-repeated uh, uh, zeros or factors so let's say let's Let's see q of x, let's say q of x has a repeated root. So q of x is an expression, right? x minus a times x minus b squared. So here I wrote that fraction. The way you write this, you write c over x minus a plus d over x minus b and plus e over x minus b squared. So don't forget that part and don't, or any of those. So for example, if you have three x plus one divided by x minus two times x plus three squared times x minus one cubed, you write that as if you wanna just write the decomposition, you're not gonna solve for a, b, c, d, e, and f, but let's see how we can write it. It's a over x minus two then that's to the second power. So you write first b over x plus three, then plus c over x plus three squared. And we're gonna take care of that one now. So it's cubed, so you write d over x minus one, plus e over x minus one squared, and plus f over x minus three cubed. And of course, this is a long problem, but I just want you to learn how to write the decomposition so let's try let's see this one q of x has non repeated irreducible quadratic factor so what do i mean by that you have p of x over x minus t times ax squared plus bx plus c and you cannot if you solve this you get a complex zero so we don't want that because we're working with real numbers so the way you write that you say e over x minus t plus fx plus g over ax squared plus bx plus c and notice this is quadratic so the numerator is linear that's what i want you to see now if you have p of x over x minus t squared over ax plus b x squared plus bx plus c squared. I have the square, so let's write that down. You write e over x minus d, and that's squared. So don't forget, plus f over x minus d squared, plus gx plus h over ax squared plus bx plus c, that's squared. Don't forget, plus mx plus n over ax squared plus bx plus c squared. And 
again, just uh, writing the composition, that's what we're working on. But let's do a complete example here. For example, if I say decompose 3x minus 5 over x cubed minus 3. First of all, x cubed minus 3, you know that's, uh, let me write that here, a cubed minus b cubed equals to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So that's how you factor it. This is the difference of two cubes. So x cubed minus one can be written as x minus one times x squared plus x plus one. Let's write the decomposition here. So again, you write, that's linear. So you write a over x minus a, and that's quadratic, you cannot solve this. I mean, you won't get real roots. So you just leave it like that. But the numerator becomes bx plus c over x squared plus x plus one. Now you can cross, well, kind of cross multiply that, find the LCD that times that and that times that, and just put the numerators equal to each other. So you know you can write 3x minus five equals to a times x squared plus x plus one and bx plus c times x minus one. If you want us with the goal is to solve for a, b, and c. Here also you can say that x equal one way of solving it. x equals to one because you know one is going to make that zero. So you substitute x by one on both sides. And if you do that, you know that's zero. And here you get 3a equals to 3 minus 5, so negative 2 equals to 3a, solve for a, a is negative 2 over 3. Now, let's say we have our a right now, and then we want to solve for c, so we want to get rid of that b, so the way the only thing we can get rid of that term is set x equals to zero, and that's what I did. If x equals to zero, a is negative 2 over 3a, and negative 2 over 3. And again, if you substitute x by 0, you get 3 times 0 minus 5, negative 2 over 3. These are zeros, and that becomes 0, and you're left just with c. And you can solve for c here. It's a simple equation, and if you do that, you get c equals to 13 over 3. So we have a and we have c. Now we want to solve for b here. It's the question is what to substitute by x. Here it's interesting because you can substitute x by any number except 0 and 1. We use those. So the simplest one is probably negative 1. <clears throat> or you can put 10, 100, anything you want. You're going to get end up with the same answer. So if you, I pick negative 1 here, 3 times negative 1 minus 5 is negative 2 over 3. And again, substitute 1, b x becomes negative b plus 13 over 3, that's c, and the negative 1 minus 1. And again, what you need to do, just use some arithmetic and solve for b here. And if you do that, you get uh, negative 8 equals to negative 2 over 3. You can distribute the negative 2, so you get 2b minus 26 over 3. So negative 8 equals to negative 28 over 3 plus 2b. And again, solve for b. And if you do that, you get b equals to 2 over 3. So we have our a, we have our b, and we have our c. So you can write this as negative 2 over 3 over x minus 1, 2 over 3x plus 13 over 3 over x squared plus x plus 1. Or if you don't want to write, have complex fractions, you can write this as negative 2 over 3 times x minus 1 plus 2x plus 13 over 3 times x squared plus x plus 1. Now, if you want to solve the same problem by using this system, same thing, the numerator we had 3x minus 5 was equal to ax squared plus x plus 1 plus bx plus c times x minus 1. Expand this. So you get ax squared 
plus AX plus A FOIL method, you get BX squared minus BX plus CX minus C and have all the coefficients with X squared. So you get A plus B from here, X squared. And for X, we have A minus B plus C times X and the constant term is A minus C. Then you can equate the coefficients. So you know three, first of all, A plus B will be equal to zero. There is no term on the left with X squared. And A minus B plus C equals to three. And A minus C equals to negative five. And that's what I have here. You get that simple system. You can use substitution or elimination and solve it. If you solve it, you do get the same answer. So which A will be negative two over three, B will be two over three, and C will be 13 over 3. I think that's a helpful uh, lecture. If uh, you forgot about the partial fraction decomposition, that's uh, please watch this a couple of times. And uh, again, the partial fraction decomposition is used in calculus too for integration. And when you do Laplace transform, and basically in uh, differential equations too. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Have a great one.